Right, this is going to be split into two sections. Firstly, I'll go over the shader, and then secondly, I'll go over the mesh and how to edit it to get these effects. Unstandard shading requires unstandard render settings, so leave everything off except for maybe bloom and possibly film. Then in the world settings, make sure the colour is just completely black, and have your light lit by a scene that's just a sun lamp that is on angle zero. Shadow, give or take. If you want to go hardcore tune, go into colour management, turn off filmic, put on standard. Your basic start point is just a diffuse pump through a shader to RGB. Add in a math node. Set this to greater than. Have it pump through an emission. And set this to a very, very low value. It can be zero if you wish. To change the colour, you can add a mix RGB node. Put that through there. Change this to a factor. Change the colours to whatever you want. This creates a single tone. For multiple tones, you need to duplicate these, have this plug into the original shader to RGB, and then stagger your mix nodes. So have this plug into this value, and have this value change to a lighter colour. Then use this one in the emission, and then increase the threshold. This is the basis of every EV2 shader. However, this does not give you license to slap it onto any old shape. Before we can do that, we need to edit the smoothness. Smooth and flat shading edits the normals of an object. You could visualize that in edit mode by going here and enabling all of these, giving you the face normal and the vertex normal, as well as edge normals in some cases. But smooth and flat shading won't save you in every case. You need to use a combination of both. To do this, I use auto smooth. Auto smooth requires everything to be shaded smooth first, and then go down here, click on normals, enable auto smooth. You can see in the preview, this makes the hard angles sharp and the shallow angles smooth, giving us the combination of both that we need. For cylinders specifically though, I like to stagger the shading so I get these lovely bands that appear on all of my references. Plates are flat, therefore, I'm going to use smooth shading. Bear with me. The plate shading references I like all have a white streak going across the corner, but without editing the mesh and changing the silhouette, that's very hard to achieve. So I figured out a way to do this by using smooth shading. I shade smooth, I go to the vertex properties, change normals, go to auto smooth, set this to 180. And now everything will be smooth shaded, so we're back to where we started. However, this time, I'm going to select this face, press I to inset, bring that down slightly, and then press Ctrl E, mark sharp. What this does is it makes Blender aware that these edges are always going to be flat shaded, even though this sets everything to smooth shaded. So now I get this white streak on the corner of the plane that reacts to the sunlight. Take your basic tune shader, make a copy of it, call it plate tune, and then you can mess with these settings to get the desired shading you want. I also like to have this slightly darker, just not as black on a plate. This now gives us the best of both worlds. But any notion of rigging or deforming this should be abandoned right now, especially since it's time for the wobbly plate. Good topology is a relative term. No one solution will fit all cases, so if you want to deform this, please use proper topology. However, if you want it to shade like a Gundam, take your box standard plate, duplicate it, add a bunch of loop cuts, then select all the vertices in the middle, Dissolve vertices. Now, select random ones from the other side, press J to join them. Select these edges. If you want to visualize this more, you can use the normal editing. But we can directly move these normals however we like. So if you press R, then N, this will rotate just the normals. And doing this, we could achieve this effect where now this will always shade lightly, even if it's not in the light but just slightly. Now for the gem, this is going to require a couple of changes to our basic tune. I'm going to get rid of this, 
going to use this. Make shader on its own. I'm going to change this to a lighter colour. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the diffuse and instead add glossy. Now here's the interesting bit with the gem shader. The gem shader is actually comprised of two shaders on two different objects overlapping. This shader is going to be the body shader, and for this I need to change the normals to point inwards on this mesh. And I'm going to duplicate this, shift D, I'm going to recalculate normals to point outwards, I'm going to hide that for a second. For this one, I need to change this to back face culling and have the blend mode to be alpha clip. Then change the shadow mode to none. This will make the shadow and shading appear on the inside of the mesh. To make this more clear in the viewport, you could go up to here, change back face culling, and this will show you that this is actually an inside out sphere. And now if we press Alt H to unhide, we'll get the other one, which will now have a new material, and it's going to be gem, shine, and this is just going to have the same settings as last time, but no back face culling. And instead of alpha clip, we're going to have alpha blend. This shader is going to sit on top of our previous shader, but because this is going to be completely opaque, we can't see anything inside it. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the shader so that we have a transparency that's only going to affect the bit that isn't shining. So I'm going to edit the shader and I'll show you the end result. Now if this looks weird, it's because I forgot to say turn off show back facing. And at this point, we'll have a shine that can be separated from the body of the gem and it'll have the inside and outside shading all at once. It just means that you have to make a duplicate of your mesh and have it sit on top of each other and have the normals reversed if you want this effect to work for both. Now, did you think that these shaders were going to be one use per object? Well, no. The actual interesting part is when you're able to use all of these shaders in tandem at once. Because these are going to be tuned shaded, so what we could do is we could just make group add an RGB duplicate it and then we can color pick our reference so this is the lightest color this is the median color this is the darkest color and then we could just have all of those Control G, made into a group, have these as outputs, you can press N, click on these colours, rename them, and these will be standard for everywhere you use it. So you could have this in any shader and then use it as an input for your colours. And now we could start using the shaders on the objects that they're meant for. So I've just copied the shader we made last time. I'm going to Pop these colours. That's where they need to go. And immediately that's looking pretty good. And then futz with the thresholds until you get it how you like. You press and hold shift to make it easier, and then move the light however you want. Same thing for the main colours. Change thresholds however you like, and here. Here we have a cylinder inside of another mesh. So here, I'm 
make a new material, change it to solid two, and then you can have it act how you want. You can even make a duplicate of this with different thresholds. And now to get those shimmering streaks, you do the same thing you did with the wobbly plate. However, this time we need to apply a mirror modifier. So here, add a few more loops. You can tidy this geometry up afterwards. Select all these, inset it slightly. Get rid of all of these inset edges. Select vertices to connect from either side. I'll select these. Select the edges. R, N. There you go. Also, don't be afraid to just make a new material. Call it black. Remove any shaders. And this will just set everything to black. And then you could use this on areas that you know you always want to be black. So here, I can add black, I can select these faces here that I know I always want to be black, and then, then just assign those, matching the reference. Even here, I can uh, match the reference. For the eyes, we're not we don't actually deal with a lot of uh, gem shading on this reference, however I'll add it for the sake of it. So gem body, select all of this, shift n, recalculate normals, inside, and then duplicate this, change this to gem shine, make sure these settings are correct, and then play with the settings. and obviously change the colours. One thing you want to, you could do if you want to be very messy is to use the knife tool to cut a straight angle from one side to the other if vertices don't exist and you don't want to add any more. And then you can select these, R, N, get that nice streak. And there you go.